This is Scoter and Nikki VD Ritterberg. Scoter is ready to be hand stripped. You can see her face is kind of unkempt and she's got fringes on her ears. She hasn't been stripped since midsummer. And I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate some hand stripping for folks. Yeah. Okay, so to strip all you need to do is take your finger and your thumb, the first finger and your thumb, and pull uh, small amounts of hair with the direction of the flow of hair. And uh, you can thin the hair this way over the dog's entire body. But I just take short uh, strokes, basically, or sh short grabs, and then you end up with the guard hairs on the outside. And you can do this all the way through. My dogs, both of them, tend to get puffy around the cheeks. Some people like this look. My husband thinks they look cool when they're wooly or puffy like this, but um, I personally think that the structure of my dog's skull is beautiful and I like being able to see it and I like a cleaner looking dog so I uh, do groom my dogs about twice a year in this manner and uh, as you can see getting a little bit of accumulation but I'll fill this whole bowl with hair several times when I strip one of these dogs. You can buy combs that'll do this um, but I both the style of my dogs, the hair doesn't really warrant, say, like a coat king for the woolier dogs that uh, cuts or rips a lot of the hair out. And uh, you do use a Furminator on occasion, but the Furminator tends to rip the base coat out of my dogs, and uh, the base coat on Scoter uh, did not return as quickly the first time I did it, and so I don't know if I'll ever use it on her again. Uh, the base coat's pretty important up here in Minnesota. It's about one degree today, and uh, it's in December, but when we get to January, February, it'll be uh, weeks where it never gets above zero, or even months for that matter, and it's important that they have some insulation when I leave them outside in their kennels with insulated boxes. <clears throat> All right, I'll continue to do this, and then uh, when it gets time to work on furnishings, um, I'll record again. So I have thinned this area on her jowl, and as you can see, Scoter's got plenty of furnishings and um, I don't usually touch the furnishings at all unless they're really fried out or, or blonde so that yellowing in the hair is hair that's old and faded out and so uh, sometimes I'll thin it but typically you don't touch the furnishings on your dog never use scissors or any sort of blade on your hair um, that will cut straight because uh, you just don't want to cut the furnishings and sometimes it can make the hair grow back differently than it was originally. But with Scoter, she's got big eyebrows and so <clears throat> a lot of times I'll thin up in here and um, back towards the edge of her eye so that it's not as heavy. Again, my husband prefers a dog with big eyebrows but I like to be able to see the, the structure of her skull a little better. And then also to give a little bit of shape, she's got hair over the bridge of her nose here and a lot of times I'll thin that out too between her eyebrows um, so that I can see kind of the shape of her face. So again this side the jaw is clean and uh, if your dog does have enough of a beard the beard does make a good handle when it comes to stripping. The other thing I will do next after kind of touching up her furnishings is work on the fringes and then also clean up some of this extra hair around her ear. Uh, all this hair grows back fairly quickly and uh, it's one of those things other than the furnishings that um, if you reduce the coverage on the dog's ears or something like that it should grow back fairly quickly. Um, if you're planning on doing this before a breed show uh, I would be really conservative if you hadn't stripped your dog in the past. Um, for example, Nikki, Mina, who doesn't like being on camera, um, her coat will grow back in six weeks and it'll, it'll look really nice in six weeks if you did a full body strip on her. Scoter is eight weeks or more and so if I didn't know that going into the breed show, which I didn't really, and I, she was kind of lean on hair, um, then uh, you may find yourself getting a lower score in hair than you would uh, otherwise. Anyway, so again, if you're going to strip right before a breed show, um, 
you should be really conservative if you don't know what your dog's coat's going to do. And uh, if you do know what it is going to do, you should time it accordingly uh, so that the dog has the best coat by the time the breed show comes up. All right, same thing with uh, ah, furnishings. I'll pull between her eyebrows and, and thin her eyebrows out. I'm only doing one side of her face right now to kind of give the, um, the show. So this is the other side. This is the unstripped side. This is the strip side. All right. We've cleaned up her face on this side. And uh, I've stripped a little bit of her eyebrows and ah, put uh, pulled some of the in-between hair. As you can see, unstripped side, strip side. You can get an idea that it shows kind of the shape of her skull. It's got that little bit of a Roman nose and a nice uh, cheekbone and skull structure so I can see that and accentuates her beauty. Um, again, when you're um, stripping this hair, you do a little bit at a time, pulling with the grain of the hair, so the direction the hair flows, uh, and that, that'll help pull, basically it pulls the dead stuff or the loose hair and leaves the healthier, younger hair uh, behind. And you don't want to do it the opposite direction as well because a lot of times you'll, you'll, you can pull out chunks, it won't come out as it won't come out as easily and then also this hair on the cheek may look chunky or like someone pulled little chunks out uh, that makes sense and so again pulling with the hair now the fringes some people like them I don't um, and uh, you know they serve a purpose since it's we're nearing the end of our hunting season and that's another reason why I'm stripping her because she won't need as much protection in the coming months as we're spending most of our activities uh, either inside or in open fields and snow. So it's not as necessary. And uh, so I'll do the ears next. But basically the fringes you actually have to pull little sections in the opposite direction oftentimes. And I'll also clean up her ears and then around the front of her ears and maybe underneath here where you get a lot of extra hair. These, this hair pulls easy enough and uh, it tends to get greasy. Uh, most people, you know, this isn't for everybody. Most dogs, um, there's a lot of dogs that you wouldn't want to touch the furnishings at all and some people don't really care, but uh, I've got dogs inside half of the time and um, I like looking at them and I like a clean dog and I also um, like not having to clean up, you know, that much extra hair. So they will shed. Anyways, we'll be back. The ear that I took the fringes off of and I thinned up the hair on the outside. So it looks very neat and clean as opposed to the ear that I haven't stripped the fringes off of yet. Um, the hair is a little longer. Some people, like I said, like the fringes, but I personally don't and so I strip them. And uh, her head's looking quite clean now as opposed to the untouched side that uh, give you an idea what her natural coat looks like. That's what she looks like unstripped after uh, a couple of months of growing. This is what she looks like when she's been groomed on this side. All right, and so because it's winter, I don't really like stripping them too much uh, on the body, but uh, you can see in her chest here, this white hair tends to grow longer in my opinion, and uh, it lifts off the body. And so a lot of this hair is ready to come out. And uh, same deal, you can lightly strip them in areas where that hair is lifting and uh, you end up with a little bit of hair that would be on your carpet otherwise. You can put that in the bowl. This bowl is half of her face and uh, as you can see right now she looks very one-sided. So pretty side and fuzzy side. Hopefully this helps. I'm not an expert. Um, you know, I, and all these dogs have such different coats that uh, there's a lot of different treatments uh, depending on. So we have gone through the stripping process of Skoder's head and I didn't touch her body much or clean her neck up much. And uh, she looks pretty good. She definitely, you know, when the hair comes back in in the next couple of weeks, a few of these spots that are kind of bear will fill in. Right here is a good example. Pulled a little bit too much. Ah, right there between her eyes. And the dander, dandruff thing will come out when you're pulling on the dead hair. Um, I don't bathe my dogs unless they roll in something really bad or get sprayed. 
Um, in the summertime, they swim in the lakes, and in the wintertime, they get snow baths. So um, it's not a huge deal here, and uh, I don't think my dogs smell at all. There's a, a slight smell when they're coming uh, covered in ice when they're wet, but um, some folks complain about dogs stinking or their drawdar stinking, and none of my drawdars stink, luckily, and um, it might be an individual thing. But again, just wanted to share how I hand strip my dogs, and uh, a lot of folks ask about it, especially those new to it, and I don't think there should be any big secrets about grooming or anything along those lines. We're all here to learn from each other because we all love the dogs and uh, love the breed. So, <clears throat> again, I didn't strip her body, and I don't plan to. It's winter time, and I do pull on loose hairs, do a quick groom over, but I don't do a real deep stripping. Anyways, that's Skoder VD Ritterberg getting her face stripped, and now she's a, once again a beautiful, presentable dog. Thank you.